With the MDI putting class tuning on pause for the past few weeks, a few things have changed since our last tier list update. Two DPS have shot up the ranks and will be joining the S tier for the first time this season. Meanwhile, Holy Priest got a stealth rework in the pirate patch, but will this change their rankings? All this and more is what we will cover today in our latest Mythic Plus meta update. And after this video is over, be sure to check out skillcap.com where we've rolled out some brand new courses for Season 3. We worked with MDI players like Mirrors from Echo and Stove from Mandatory to create the largest collection of guides for Mythic Plus. These include courses which teach you the fundamentals and advanced mechanics you need to know to master your class. We even have dungeon walkthroughs that teach you some hidden tricks that you can easily use in your next run to rank up before the season ends. All this and more is why we offer a rating gain guarantee, where we promise that you will gain at least 500 IO score while using our guides. So after this update, visit the links below for an exclusive discount code to sign up for skillcap.com today. Anyway, back to the video. Let's kick things off with our two ranged winners, starting with the new spec joining the S tier. Shadow Priest will be joining Augmentation of Ochre, Balanced Druid, and Fire Mage at the highest ranks. The last time we updated our tier list, Shadow was coming off a series of damage buffs, which have exceeded our initial expectations. The spec has amazing single target damage, even when specced into a full AoE build, getting insane value from Funnel. With buffs to both Psychic Link and Mind Blast, Shadow is able to do incredible AoE damage while pumping damage into a priority target, and scales extremely well with increased mobs. On big pulls, Shadow Priest is swimming with procs and resources, allowing it to easily top the meters, and it's no wonder that the spec was prominently featured in the recent MDI, where players like Stove showed its true power in competitive play. But even in weekly keys and for casual players, Shadow is still a great option. Because of its impressive damage and well-rounded utility, it will be moving up to the highest tier. The only other winner from recent tuning is Frost Mage, who got a series of damage buffs last Tuesday, targeting both single target and AoE damage. While the Mage class as a whole is well represented in high keys, Frost is arguably the worst out of the three, but still very competitive. Right now, both Fire and Arcane Mage simply have better damage profiles. Fire has amazing priority damage and can easily cleave down mobs with Ignite, and Arcane is one of the best burst windows in the game, allowing it to pump on both single target and AoE. Unfortunately, Frost is limited to just offering strong AoE, which is obviously a good thing in Mythic Plus, but the spec leaves a lot to be desired when it comes to single target, and we doubt a 10% buff to Frost Bolt will be enough to make it more desirable over Fire. So for the meantime, Frost will be staying at a very respectable A tier. Now, before we reveal our tier list, let's check in on representation for the title race this season. As you can see, Mage is clearly in the lead, with Fire taking up a majority of the spots. Augmentation of Ochre is trailing behind, and as you can see, Shadow Priest has made some impressive gains in rank 1 representation, and we expect their number to grow in the coming weeks. That brings us to our updated rankings for the end of Season 3. It should come as no surprise that Augmentation, Fire, Balance, and now Shadow Priest are S tier. These four specs are currently dominating the leaderboards across all dungeons, and that is unlikely to change before the season's end. The March 12th hotfixes also include a minor damage buff to Marks Hunters, but due to class survivability issues, we don't expect it to move up a tier. Ellie Shaman got a similar damage buff, but for the same reason, don't expect it to suddenly skyrocket in performance. While Destro Warlock had a strong showing in the MDI, we will be keeping it on the A tier. The spec does really well in massive pulls, which is all too common in the competitive game mode, but this doesn't make it broken for your weekly keys. The spec is obviously really strong with good representation at the rank 1 level, but isn't at the same level as our current S tiers. Now, moving on to melee, we have another spec climbing the rank since our last update. For the first time in a while, Rhett will be moving all the way up to the S tier. Back in January, the spec got some pretty juicy damage buffs, and we said it would be a spec to monitor. Since then, the legendary axe has become more accessible, and Rhett gets a disproportionate benefit compared to some other melee for wielding this weapon. For Rhett Paladin, spreading the dot from the weapon is insanely easy thanks to the combination of Crusading Strikes and Blessed Champion. The automatic cleave effect from the combination of these two talents means Rhett's can go into pulls instantly applying the dot with one hit. What limited Rhett Paladin in the past was being hardlocked into an AoE build, which meant losing out on single target damage, but the Legendary has single-handedly solved this issue. So now with great damage, utility, and survivability, Rhett is seeing a massive resurgence in the meta across all key levels. In fact, Rhett has actually taken the lead in the title race for rank 1. Despite the early season being dominated by rogues and demon hunters, the bad luck protection buff to the Legendary has tipped the scales in recent weeks. That brings us to our updated tier list for the end of Season 3. Rhett will join the S tier for the first time in quite a while. Recent hotfixes did include a buff to Survival Hunter and a nerf to Sub Rogue, but we don't think these affect their overall rankings. One wildcard to monitor is Fury Warrior. 
Right now, there seems to be a bit of a resurgence of melee comps in the meta given the relative popularity of Mistweaver Monk, with Battle Shout being a vital buff to those types of groups. Fury is another big benefactor from the Legendary Axe, but still doesn't offer enough outside of raw damage to get bumped up to the high tiers. We also made a minor adjustment, moving Assassination Rogue down a tier once again. This spec might have baited us too hard in the early season, and is clearly lagging behind both Outlaw and Subtlety. Moving on to healers, we have one minor winner from the latest round of class tuning. Preservation of Okra was one of two healers to get buffs during the third week of March, seeing a few changes aimed at buffing heals and passive defense. While these changes are definitely helpful, we don't expect them to make the spec feel suddenly better, so it will be remaining on the A tier for now. Many of the survivability issues with preservation stem from the fact that its defensive kit requires good proactive play, being quick to preemptively trade obsidian scales or renewing blaze into bigger sources of damage. And while Evoker might seem to have a good external with time dilation, it's a cooldown that can be a bit trickier to use, especially in higher keys. The staggered damage can give players a false sense of confidence, especially when it's overlapped with rot damage. And while Evoker might have the best damage on paper, it's quite difficult to justify a damage build, especially in high tyrannical keys, where longer boss fights require better sustainable healing. Holy Priest was also a recent winner, getting a rework to their talent tree in the 2.6 patch. The talent tree was updated to include a few quality of life improvements, most notably allowing Pontifex to work on AoE healing and turning Imperial Blaze into a passive ability that automatically activates with Chastise. For now, we will be moving Holy up to the A tier. Disc Priest will likely remain the preferred Priest spec in higher keys, having better cooldowns and more flexibility with dealing damage. Now though, let's take a look at the race to rank 1. The meta continues to be dominated by Mistweaver, Resto Druid, and Disc Priest, who all have a combination of better healing or damage compared to Evoker. That brings us to our updated rankings for healers in Season 3. We should note that Resto Druid's got a buff to Rejuvenation in recent tuning, which doesn't really matter in Mythic Plus as it's more of a raid healer buff. Monks also got some mixed changes in recent tuning and will stay on the S tier for the time being. We've also made the decision to bump Holy Priest up to the A tier. After some pretty big buffs back in January and with a recent rework, it's proving to be quite competitive even in higher key levels. Overall, healer balance continues to be quite good this season and is looking even better. Without any recent changes to tanks, let's see how the rank 1 race is shaping out. Currently, Vengeance Demon Hunter has a massive lead, dwarfing representation on the leaderboards. This tank was so well represented in the MDI for a reason, it's practically immortal while having the best control kit in the meta. The AoE CC offered by Vengeance enables massive pulls, and of course was part of some interesting Shadow Meld tech during the tournament. As far as the rest of tanks are concerned, there's pretty low representation across the board. And with that, we have our updated tank tier list. Demon Hunter and Prot Paladin are still in the lead, with everyone else now being in the A tier. Now, this might seem like a hot take shoving everyone in the high tiers, but this has been a fairly balanced season for tanks. We've even moved Guardian Druid up a tier after seeing what they might be capable of with the right comp. Currently, there is a Guardian Druid pushing very high keys with a melee cleave built around sustained damage, who makes smaller efficient pulls in order to play around the longer cooldown of Incarnation. While Demon Hunter and Prot Paladin are clearly on another level, the four remaining tanks are actually pretty close. And with Season 3 likely ending sometime next month, we want to know what you think. Was this a balanced season? Let us know what you would change. And while you're doing that, if you're looking to rank up fast this season, be sure to check out skillcap.com using the links below, where you can preview all of our amazing class courses and dungeon guides, and learn more about our Rank Up Guarantee, which promises you'll gain at least 500 IO while using our guides. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.